Howdy, welcome to Beaver Mountain Works. We're back from a great, fantastic summer vacation out with the horses and seeing all of Western Canada. We're going to start our season off with showing some techniques on how to use a hole punch properly on a project that we're going to be doing. Here's the cat in the background saying this hello as well. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and mark this on the end. We come forward here, put my line here. So I'll gouge out the stitching line so the stitches drop down below. Also gouge one at the top here. And this is a little to tool to show us the stitching, where to put our holes. And we'll do the same thing over up here. Stitching wheel, they call it. And it shows an indication there of where we're going to punch our holes. Another way that people do that is they can take they can take a, a, a ruler like this. This happens to be five hole, five stitches per inch. A lot of people do five, six, or seven or your basic. What a lot of people will also do is they'll say, take this out, lay it out, and then they'll go like, oh, I want it every quarter inch, and they'll put a little line on it, a dot like that. So, say for example, I want to go every quarter inch, they can go like that works just as well. So if you're making one of these things or anything else, you can do it there and you have a quarter inch, or you can get into, instead of for being a quarter inch, you can go into 3 sixteenths and just continue on, one, two, three, one, two, three. See how it's a little bit closer? One, two, three right there, and one, two, three. A little bit tighter so it's up to you you can also do eighth of an inch and it kind of gives you a guide to where you're going to be um, punching your holes in As you can see we do all this stuff by hand and um, then i put my piece of leather behind my hole punch i just punch my holes so you want to have a piece of leather behind it because of the anvil here which is uh, usually brass um, Attack by a little fly. Because <laughs> um, your cutting tube here is sharp and you don't want it to doll out hitting the brass all the time. So you put the leather behind it and it gives it another anvil into it. It also gives a cleaner cut. So when you're actually going through leather itself, uh, it's like putting a board underneath another board when you drill it. It helps keep it so it doesn't break out the other side if you don't flip the board over. So when you go through it, it actually pursues right through it into the anvil, the soft other piece of leather. It's the same type of material. So the density takes it. Also when you're um, with a cami action of it, it gives you a certain angle that it actually goes a lot simpler. Whereas if you did it without, you have to put a little bit more oomph and you can actually hear that. You have that crunch sound when you have this. It's a little smoother. You can hear the crunch all the way through, but it's not a it's not a, a heavier ring. It's a lighter ring because it has something to absorb the leather into it. So I hope this little trick here is going to help you out. BeaverMountainWorks.com. Take care.